Hi everyone, it's Marco Di Stefano here. I'm uh, doing this video to uh, guide you through my uh, one of my latest compositions, uh, which you can find here at my website, meaning marcodistefano.art. So the composition is uh, this one, Tramonto di Ghiaccio. Is a composition that you there is a video on YouTube you can watch uh, you can subscribe to my channel but and if you are interested to buy a royalty free license on a, it's also audio available jungle. here on audio jungle so I kindly suggest that you uh, listen to the composition before uh, you come back here so the um, the composition is made hundred percent with the uh, uh, libraries from Spitfire audio uh, there is mainly the uh, symphonic series and then there is a uh, uh, LCO and Hans Zimmer percussion and uh, percussion redux so I want to advise you that the template I've been using in this composition is not the is not great I mean don't look at it I just uh, added instruments while, while I need it I'm currently working to set up a huge template with all my libraries but this will be the topic of another video. Uh, so the composition, as you heard, start with uh, woodwinds. Woodwinds which are playing together. Uh, so flutes, clarinets and bassoon. Uh, and these are playing in a dissonant way. Uh, so I, I, it took to me a lot of time just to make these four instruments work together and play like uh, something like a real orchestra. So let's start by adding first the sec only the second flute. First flute. And here it is. This is the So for this part, I wanted to have a continuous up and down because I wanted to give the, the impression of like walking. And to do that, I worked a lot with the uh, automations. Automation at the level of the dynamics, at the level of the expressions and also the vibrato. So if I want to show you, for example, one of the articulation here, uh, sorry, automation here, um, voila, and let's here again this part this is just a fade in and here it goes and then down and then up voilà. and so and so on and there is a, a similar uh, uh, automation that we for all these uh, instruments uh, which is a uh, not exactly the same, I must admit I've been recording all of them uh, in a separate moment. Um, also, another important thing is that, uh, so uh, the, the delegato, actually, as you can see here, notes are done in a way that, so th there is a legato in between, uh, for example, here, the first six notes, but then the legato ends here and it starts another phrase. And that's very important. It, it's adding a lot of realism to the to the composition, because of course in reality uh, a flute cannot play legato all this time, so the player needs some time to breathe. And also another things which I did and I liked very much is you see these dynamics here going down. This is a moment in which actually the is like it's even more than legato is really the note is ending sooner and so for example let's hear here on this one so you here you can hear there is a kind of emptiness in the instrument here that this is exactly what i wanted to to give um then this part so the this part is like, like really at, the, at this moment in the background. So there is more because you have also some violins here, which are uh, harmonics violins, which are playing also in the back. And, uh, but. Voilà. But 
the main uh, part of the composition here is uh, given to the trumpet which actually is uh, here you can hear in the composition there is a, a melody which is uh, recurring and going from instruments to the other and in a way is also transforming from one instrument to the other and this melody it's kicked off with the trumpet so you can listen to the trumpet here Okay, and here, this moment here, there is a doubling, which is done with the O uh, corn anglais, so you can hear, voila, so here, and then we stop here. So at this moment here, there is a, a main uh, melody, which is also starting, and the boy is kicking it off. Beautiful oh boy. So let's give a look, for example, how, how these uh, oboe have been, what I've done here in terms of automations. Uh, so it's like the tracks, yes. Which one is this? Okay, no. Idle automation is this one. Show used automation. So you can see that I, it's there is really some quite some efforts in making these sounds as much realistic as possible, either with the use of expression maps so I'm triggering different uh, type of playing, but also with uh, um, uh, working with dynamics. So if we listen to this oboe solo and we want to listen to it alone, here it goes. And then goes down. Okay, everything. So you can see that there is uh, quite some amount of work which has been done uh, at the level of the automation for all the instruments. Uh, as you can see also this composition has been really composed for uh, different uh, singular, single instruments and not like uh, bundled uh, instruments like uh, uh, woodwinds high. So here is really a composition written for uh, for orchestra, so it was a, a quite a huge orchestration exercise that I've been doing. Um, another things that we can see is that there is also all the the brass section. You, you will see that comes in play uh, later. At the beginning, it's just the trumpet, and then here you have all violins, which at the beginning are more are playing mainly in pizzicato. they are here there is something happening with the violins so these are cellos and double basses they let listen then the, their voice actually at this moment but then they fade out again so there is all this time where this melody is uh, is built and then the, there is the big, you, the important moment when something changes oh, i think uh, kubase is saving now okay uh here so at this moment here the orchestra goes playing very very softly And all out. So just to show you this, for example, uh, if we look at the how the changes, so you can see that during this part there is quite a change in dynamics. I'm really going. I'm really playing everything at the piano level, and.
here is where the strings come in and now brass comes okay let's start by isolating first all the brass here let's hear what they do so they they really build the nice but we have also from the woodwinds some very bass instruments playing confirm bassoon the melody is doubled on the oboe okay let's put it again there is some violins here which are singing there is some piccolo flute which is doing some kind of voila like a bird playing on the trees, singing. And then we go with the flute also. Clarinet. Let's try everything. Let's try this part with all the instruments together. So this is what it comes. You hear that there is some pizzicato here with slapped. Voilà. And then this part ends and it starts going in completely a different uh, motion. Voilà, let's look a bit deeper at this part here. So the idea is that there is this melody here playing na 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 so moving from one instrument to the other which is starting with uh, the, the flute so look at this the clarinet and here there is the horns Okay, so you see the, there is the melody going really from one instrument to the other. Again, it starts with the flutes. Clarinets. Horns. Oboe. And then again, horns. Cornelia. Then it comes some bassoon. Let's put all together. Of course, some other woodwinds uh, they play chords. And then this open up to the ending, which I'm stopping now. Uh, because I wanted also to let you listen to the violins, to, the, to sorry, to the strings actually, which are playing also a very important role in this part. They are doing some tremolo. Voila, they are building the atmosphere. No percussion here. Okay, all together. Now let's go to the ending part. Ah, now look this timpani. Timpani roll. Okay, for this ending, I'm using a full or the full orchestra. Uh, so the ma the main voice is given by the uh, strings. So we can hear them here, which are playing this, and the low strings. Voila. This is what they are doing. All the strings together. We 
we have some percussion, so mainly it's a gun, the timpani. And now let me uh, show you what the brass is doing now. So they also have a very important part because they are adding a bit of chords. And the trumpet. So in this part, woodwinds are mainly doing chords uh, and the strings uh, are leading. But you can see that there is this small moment here. Voila. It was very hard to make this come out of the tutti of orchestra. So it was really, there was a lot of uh, frequency which were like crashing all together. So I had really to uh, to reduce the dynamics of many other instruments to make this come out. So let's listen to what it looks like. You can hear it well. And then the ending. Strings pizzicato playing at the end here. All right, so that's a bit of a uh, walkthrough. Uh, of course, I could go much deeper into the details of, for example, what instruments I used. Uh, but for this first video, I didn't want to make. Uh, I want, didn't want to go too long. Uh, but would be nice if you leave me your comments. You might tell me, for example, what kind of part uh, you might be interesting to see and then I can try to, to, do, uh, to answer to your comments or do this in the next video. Uh, let me uh, finally show you what's, what I did at the level of the mixer. So for the mixer, uh, Spitfire audio libraries come already mixed. So there is nothing to do really, they are great. So you can see that here I initially put a Neutron 2 in each track, but then I disabled it. I'm not just using at all, so no EQ at all. The only thing is that all the, all, all the audio tracks for the single instruments at the end goes down into groups. And at the end we have the woodwinds, brass, strings and percussion groups which then the four together goes into the orchestra group here. Then I have some FX channels where I have so short reverb, long reverb, short delay and long delay, uh, where I'm putting first of all some frequency to uh, take out uh, the very low frequencies from the reverb, which was a bit annoying at the beginning. And then I'm sending all these to the AUX channel here. You can see I've been playing uh, a lot with uh, these, uh, uh, this, the decibel here that you see on the gain of the channels. These are the results. You see that mostly I've been using always the short reverb and the short delay, except then uh, for the percussion, I really wanted to, I'm using the long uh, version of the reverb and the delay both. And finally, uh, to glue everything, I'm putting, I have a, a another uh, reverb here. I'm using always reverence reverb from uh, um, uh, Cubase. And, uh, but this is a very low one. So you see it's like 10, so very low. And then at the end for the mastering, I have ozone running with a very little boosting of high and low frequencies and with some maximizer to ensure I'm reaching the minus one decibel target. Uh, that's all. So again, uh, you can let me know if there is something uh, that you would like to see much more in detail. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. So I'm planning to do one video like that for all the composition I'm doing and to share with you all the things I'm learning about this wonderful world of orchestrating with uh, virtual instruments. 
Uh, thank you very much again and see you in the next video.